Hello and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host Kristen and today is Loom Knitting Tuesday. I hope you're doing well. Uh, this morning is really pretty delayed. <laughs> uh, about 30 minutes so I'm so sorry. I have been having a big conversation <laughs> with my husband so uh, anyway it is good to see you. I hope you are having a fantastic day and um, I don't really have much planned for today um, as far as uh, Q&A, if y'all want to kind of pop and ask me questions today, and um, good morning everyone. <laughs> Hi Patty. Hello Dawn. Hi Bridget. I hope y'all are doing well today. I see Carol has jumped on. Do you have your coffee today? <laughs> I was up late last night working on my blanket for the Bernat Stitch Along. Um, I realized <laughs> yesterday, thank you, good morning, thanks for the hearts. Oh, that's good, that cheers me up. Um, I, I was working on the Bernat Stitch Along last night and it's on needles, I know, just to show you though. Um, anyway, I was up, I'm trying to find where it connects. <laughs> I've got it kind of wadded up. Anyway, I'm adding this border. See this? And I'd like to teach you guys for loom knitting. I'd like to teach you how to do this diagonal rib. This is upside down, but this diagonal rib and uh, this eyelet and then this. I can't even find it. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like you teach you these things on the loom and then obviously adding on a border and so that'll be some up-and-coming stuff um, this right here is the um, this is a it's a it's a cable and you're twisting um, four over four and so it's kind of hard on the um, it's easy on the needles that phone it only rings when it's political season <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, this only good gravy. Oh, thank you. I think it's going to stop. Um, anyway, so it's harder. I'm just my day this morning. This is why I'm so late. Um, anyway, it's harder to do this on the loom crossing the four over four stitches. So, um, Anyway, I'm thinking about doing a edging, and I make an edging, and then we show you how to add it on. Um, anyway, this is what the corners look like added together as they have been written, not by me. This is the Bernat Stitch Along. I think it's a Yarn Inspirations one. Um, anyway, these are the two. This is the first border that comes along, and then you pick up stitches along the way. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Yeah. And then this is the second border that comes along, and then you pick up the stitches. So this is what it looks like for this particular border. And then, um, Chris, I think you are working on this one, and I wanted to tell you this morning um, that what I had to do is when I start picking up the stitches, um, I'm having to go and, like, take this extra trim piece and kind of work it through some of these other stitches and I pulled it through because it was actually gappy because I picked up through the side of this stitch here and so it left this part like looking bigger and then in order to make them look the same I had to bring my yarn around and work it and kind of fake a stitch and so anyway I don't know if that's clear as mud but <laughs> hopefully I can I can show you how to do it maybe I'll do a, like a mini 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 tutorial on my blog and show you when I do the next corner um, because I think you're gonna want to do that so anyway you like that corner um, good morning everyone oh you're in love with the blanket now Chris I'm just flipping put through um good morning Ada good morning sunshine <laughs> um, good morning Brandy and Alicia, hi, good morning. Um, yeah, my reaction to the phone because I know it's like, it's like political parties. I'm like, we want your vote. How on earth do we weave in those heavy ends? <laughs> well, um, that's when I get my stack or two of my handy dandy tapestry needles. <laughs> 
Everybody should have different tapestry needles in your toolkit. And if you have plastic ones, you need backup. Um, actually, let's just talk about these, these tapestry needles. So I think I just dropped one on the floor. <laughs> I got this little test tube thing from somebody. I don't even know if it's for needles, but some of these are really big. This particular one came from the Martha Stewart Loom Knit and Craft Kit. Let's see if you can put that up again. I feel like I'm doing a makeup tutorial. <laughs> see how it's got um, the big eye on it? This would be perfect for this yarn. Um, I'm gonna put the rest of them back in here, but see these can break. And so if you are taking these on a trip, I would have more than one and put a paper clip in there for backup. Um, there it is. I'm trying to find my other one. But also, if you can get a metal one, especially when you're working really big yarn, like this one, but bigger. I have a, it's in another toolkit, but getting a, like a wide-eyed tapestry needle in your toolkit is good. Also getting one of these little hooks. This is a baby fix-it hook. See how there's a hook at one end and then a hook at the other end, and it helps you work your stitches up to fix them. And so those are good things to have in your toolkit. I'm putting them back in my little holder here. So those are things that, and I've even got like a, um, a stitch holder that's like a, that's, I can't even talk today, a safety pin. So anyway, good morning, y'all. So this is the one that I would use, Chris, um, and then you're just gonna weave in your tail you know, just, just put your yarn in and, and weave that in. Um, I can't even, I don't even want to do this on camera because this is, I don't want to do that. I don't have room where I'm sitting. Um, but anyway, that, hopefully that helps. Sorry. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, you're concerned that it'll create bumps. Okay. Then I need to show you. Okay. Let me show you. Do y'all mind if I show you how to weave in some, um, your tails here I may have to go and turn on my light I think I didn't turn on these little things I have a switch and if I don't turn that switch on I can't control these lights next to me and that's what's happened today is I sat down and started this and I didn't turn on the lights I'm having a weird morning I, I was um, I was having an extended conversation with my husband before I came to the turn the broadcast on and that's why I'm so delayed so right now I'm trying to clean up my workstation here so that I can um, show you. I'm getting my blanket out and we'll just weave in some tails because I have to do this anyway and weaving in tails has to do with any kind of yarn crafting you're doing. So let's just do that together. Getting my blanket ready. You love the Susan Bates finishing needles for weaving in ends. It's one with a big eye and so easy to thread. Oh, thank you for the link, Joanne. That's great. They have different sizes at Hobby Lobby that are for double pointed with a slit in the middle. I use those for larger yarns, easier to thread with no splitting. Oh, well, there you go. That's good. That sounds, that sounds fantastic. Um, so anyway, Chris, I would leave your tails in until you connect your corners. I would leave this tail in right here um, because you're going to want to use this um, to um, work this uh, this other corner together with it. And you'll you you may see actually it's going to be more this one. This one you can leave. So this one you can weave, and the one on the corner. Um, this one weave. This one leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah you almost bought some today oh <laughs> face palm <laughs> um okay let me oh and just so you know when you're doing these borders this is what's left and i'm mm, i've got a quarter left of the border on the th the third border so you will have to tie on your second ball I don't know where I haven't done it yet I'm hoping I'm hoping this lasts <laughs> and then I just start a new ball <laughs> for the for the uh, thing Chris and I are both working on the um, Bernat stitch along I'm sorry I'm still struggling getting this big bulky blanket out of the way so I can make I can flip the camera and show you because right now it's like all over the place it's really big okay so let me flip the camera all right whoops 
and flip. Okay. I can't even tell what you can see, but we'll, we'll go from here. All right. So this is, this is the blanket I'm working on. And um, the side panels were done and this, this, this side, um, this edging was done. We picked up the stitches and then this one was done and it met up and then it joined. And then Chris, what I did is I actually, um, I threaded this. See how that goes through really nicely. That's a really wide eye. Um, I could probably do it one more time. So um, I go through these two stitches here and then I kind of just whip it around um, back through these other two stitches. Okay, and then I'm, I'm making a, um, I'm kind of making a circle to stitch that in and so it makes it look like one continuous line instead of having like a jog. Okay, and then now that I've done that, I'm just gonna come right back through. Okay, and then this is the, the back. Can you guys see this? Um, what I do is I like to come through the back of the stitches here. Okay, now on this particular one, there is a seam, um, so it, it allows for being able to hide that. Um, but I wouldn't like, you wouldn't whip stitch. If you whip stitch, it, it's going to grow on you. Um, but what you can do is, uh, now it's harder to see in this video, but you can try and follow the stitches along and just I'm weaving in and out of the bumps and trying to, to follow along the pattern of what a stitch would look like. Uh, on this bulkier yarn. And, and so it's actually hiding pretty nicely. Um, you can also go and pick up, um, I'm trying to find a good spot. This one over here on this side would be better. So if I can skip over to the other side, sometimes you can just skip behind something and then I double check and make sure that I'm not like putting any extra yarn on the other side. And then now I can go and pick up behind some of these pearl bumps. Um, I'm sorry. So between these stitches, there's a column behind this and I'm just picking up these back stitches here. So it depends upon the, the project you're working on, but you may be able to kind of pick up behind these stitches. And if you, if you go, oh my gosh, I've got this big long line, well, no, you don't want to go there. You'll just, you'll just get something closer. I just wanted to show you, like, don't skip so far. So you're going to go back through here and pick up this little back stitch and get as close to the next stitch as you can. But I'm liking to, like, follow along where these pearl bumps are and if you follow along here then it hides better see how this is kind of hiding and some people like to go and be diagonal and go all the way down and stuff but I think that you can see a definitive line when you do it too far so what I do is if I go up this way then I'll come back this way and kind of zigzag it and I've gone in enough here I've gone about three or four inches so I could probably take my scissors and um, go ahead and cut it with this particular yarn, it's not like I can split it and, and split the difference and have it weave in two different directions. I just can't do that. So that particular one would be done. And then I need to do these other ones here. So anyway, I hope you can, that helps you. Um, but yeah, this is what this corner looks like when it comes together. So this is a cable one direction and then this is a cable another direction and then it's just picking up these end stitches here. So that's my corner. Um, if you want to see what I'm doing on needles, I know this is on needles, but essentially you can do the same on a loom. Um, like I said, this is really big, so I'm trying to get this bulky stuff out of the way. So what you do is you pick up all these stitches here along the side, and the way you do that is um, you take your um, you take a you can take a hook if if you're trying to put this up on a loom, but you would put your um, put your hook in and then grab your new yarn and pull it up and make a loop and then you can once you if you if you can work it and figure out how to do it on a cable needle first um, that would be easier but if you don't have a cable needle you could hook it up and leave the loops long and then put them up hang them up on pegs so you would pick pick up the loop and then put this 
on a loom, you have to put it in from the inside like that um, to, to hang it. But that would be hanging them all like this. Um, but there's not really a reason just yet to do it. Um, like if you were, if you're going to be picking these up um, to do for a loom, you don't need to hang them all up on it. You only need to do them one at a time. So um, you can um, you can get one of these needles just to be a big stitch holder. Okay, it'd be better than just using a piece of yarn. All this is is just it's just acting as a big cable to to sit through here. So. Um, you could even get a cable if you wanted to. Let's see how this this cable and this circular needle is. That's that's just holding these stitches on here. And um, anyway, so this is what's happening. Oh, now that I'm I'm wrecking my work here. Hold on. Let me fix my work. All right, there we go. Okay, I fixed my work. So what's happening is, um, and I showed this yesterday if anybody wants to see it, but what's happening is is I, I work this row here, and then when I get to here, this is the same thing that would happen on a loom. I would just, I would take off a, a loop from here and put it together with this one, and then work these stitches together. And so on a loom, if I'm working these stitches on this side, or if I'm working at this side, and then I wanna add, um, I wanna add a, um, a loop uh, from, from the piece here, then I would just put it, I would just knit them together on one particular stitch. So if these, then I would just grab another loop and put it on here and then use the last stitch of my knitting to work them together. So if that was not clear as mud, <laughs> I'm, I'm using this to kind of help me hook this in and use this for later. So that's what that is. <laughs> so, um, okay. A year ago, I made a scarf with cable on a loom. We'll post in your blog, Ada says. Anyway, you like the chunky cable, Chris? Yeah. Um, anyway, I hope that helps. Um, I have um, had a discussion with Joanne. I'm sorry. The, the camera is like being weird. <laughs> Oh, you're welcome. Uh, um, uh, I have this loom here, and I was thinking about. See, now I gotta move this out of the way. Oh wait, no, you probably want to see this stitch. Okay, let me show you this stitch. Y'all see this? Y'all see this stitch? It's upside down, but it doesn't really matter because it's showing how it weaves in and out. You see this? It's a honeycomb, and so it does this. It looks like it would be a rib pattern, but it kind of moves like this. So basically you work two stitches together at different points, like for about four rows, and then you switch it up, and then you switch it back, and you switch it up, and you switch it back. And so on needles, what you do is um, every four rows, you basically switch the stitches and knit or purl those in conjunction with one another okay so um, I'm sorry it looks like I have a weak connection I hope I'm not cutting out on anyone I haven't changed where I am so I'm not really sure why sorry I don't know how to fix my connection hopefully you guys are able to to see that so on needles it does this and on a loom it can do that but actually on a loom it can be easier and so um, let me get this loom over here and then I'm gonna show you hopefully um, okay so you can you can do a couple of things on the loom it would certainly be easier to say um say i have a a loom and then um i've got a, a stitch you know if i've got a stitch going on here 
I'm having a weird day. I'm so sorry, y'all. If I have a set of stitches next to each other, um, that and and they need to like change, I can like switch them. You know, I can just switch the stitches and then purl or knit whichever one I need to in sequence. Yeah, and so I can do that if I'm working like in a flat panel going back and forth. However, if you've ever done what people call the box stitch or the double rib, um, you can actually make this stitch um, easier on the loom. And um, now if you want to just make it and not go back and forth with like the blanket, but if you want to start with the with this pattern and just continue to do it the whole way, it makes a really beautiful pattern. Um, I can show you how to get set up for that. Um, would you like to see that? And you would do double knitting. This isn't necessarily the loom I'd recommend. I just grabbed it because it was small. <laughs> so, oh, sorry, I got an alert. <laughs> um, my connection looks like it's better. Are y'all still there with me? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and just show it and flip the screen because it's that's what I had prepared to show y'all today. Okay. Oh, good. All right, we're getting some thumbs up. <laughs> All right, so this is the loom. You know what? I need to turn the light on. It's it's just too dark. Take my flip flops off. You guys see that better? All right, so we've got our loom. I've got some yarn. Um, I'm gonna put my slip knot on this. We're gonna ignore these end pegs here. Okay, we're totally ignoring these. And this is a really bright spot here. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to get that glare off. Oh, let me see if this works better. Is that better? Okay. Um so I'm gonna start and put my little extra tail down here. I've got my slip knot. I want to set this uh, foundation up, and so we're just going to go straight down in between the first and second peg, and then wrap around, and then go up to the backboard. Is this in focus? Okay. Uh, we're gonna go around and down between the next two, and go around and up. Go between. Uh, I'm sorry, these next two, so we're skipping. And so we're just zigzagging across like a figure eight. We won't do this the whole way, but just continue to go all the way down. Get that on my hand. Oh, wouldn't you know? I pulled from the side, not the the center. Okay, so I've gone all the way down, and then I'm wrapping around. Okay, so that's now that's all wrapped around. Now I'm going to go around this um, peg back here in the back, and then um, I'm going to go around this one again. And then around the second one here and so I have two uh, together and on the front board when they come out it's going to look knit and then I'm gonna go back to this back panel and I'm gonna wrap around these this set here these two okay and those two from this back side they're gonna look knit but from this side when they spread out because because we're weaving in this direction um, it's going to spread out my knitting this way and so I'll be able to see these stitches from this side and they'll look purled. And so I'm gonna to continue to go around and then see how there is a space here, but there's not here, okay? So there's gonna be a gap every other, uh, every two pegs here, there'll be a gap. And on the other side, it alternates. 
So this is a uh, what some people call a double rib stitch. It's it's really a it's a two by two rib, meaning there's two knit stitches together and two purl stitches together. It's a cheatier way to do it. Um, I, I I hate to ever call the loom a cheating tool, um, but it is it is a it is a um, in this particular case it it actually is a way to to kind of cheat the cheat the system <laughs> and and do this particular thing. It makes it easier. Okay, so when I knit this last stitch over, um, I'm always gonna have one stitch here that's kind of a loner and at this end, and that'll change. So just go through and knit these off. And you can knit them off in sequence too, and just this first row, I'm just, working on one side. I can't really see my monitor very well, so it's kind of hard to see if I'm if I'm in the frame. Hopefully I am. Now, if you if you go to one side and then you do the second side, it's going to be loose. I mean, I don't always do that. I'm just doing that for today. But what I'm going to do is make this even. And so, since this was tight and this is loose, I'm just going to go back between these stitches that are connected, and I'm just going to pull on them. And um, actually, I'm going to go from the first side that I started and kind of pull on them and get it looser. Do it again. I just want to get them like nice and even. Okay, so um, it's it's harder to tell right now from this picture, but um, there is a definite gap between um, the front and the back. Okay, um, so then we just follow this pattern that you already did, and we go down. Now, what you're used to is is e wrapping. You guys have um, e wrapped. Okay, and you can certainly do that. But if you want to make it look um, like this pattern, and you see how these stitches are, um, let's see if I can get a thinner needle. Do you see how these stitches are like V's, like, like one, two? You see how it's like nice and it's flat and flush? See how, see how flush and nice that is? See these top ones? Um, if you e-wrap, it's going to cause this one to go like this, and so you get a bumpier stitch. It's a Y. Instead of a V, it makes it do this. It's twisting the stitch. And so if you continue to e-wrap, all these are going to be a little bumpy. Now, if you want this really flush, then you're going to have to do something different. If you've done this stitch before, um, and it, the temptation is to, so you can choose to keep doing it, I, and it's totally fine to keep e-rubbing it. I'm just letting you know. But if you want to make it match the the knitting one, you're going to have to lay it over and consider it almost like a U-wrap. Okay, so I'm going to knit these two and these two, and then I'm going to go back and do those two. And you could probably wrap up to four really loosely. So I'm wrapping them, and I'm going to make it kind of loose, and then I'm going to work these two stitches. And you can even tug on that yarn to make it more like a U-wrap. And then do these. Okay. And then pull on that. And so what we're doing is we're continuing this pattern along. And it's going to be a little slower. Like if you're used to E-wrapping it, um, two things are going to happen. It's going to be slower, but you're going to use less yarn. And it's going to be, well, actually the third is the benefit that I was showing earlier, that it's not going to be um, bumpy, it's going to be more smooth. And so after you do a few of these stitches, you can go and tug on it to get that extra um, yarn in to make sure your, your gauge is nice and loose and you're not doing like a flat knit versus a, um, a U. A U is going to be closer to a true knit stitch. And you could go through and make these all like a true knit stitch where you um, put the yarn above and then pull the loop down and then take the old one off and put the new one on, but that takes a while. So I'm just going and wrapping like maybe four at a time or two sets at a time and then pull this 
in between. You're just pulling the, the stitch between. Okay, and so um, the way this pattern works um, best is if you do um, four rows and then switch and then four rows and switch, which makes it an actually an eight row repeat. It seems like it would be a four row repeat, but it's not because it has to go back to the way it was before. So, and then you've got one last stitch and it still has to be done and it's wrapped this direction because if this was another pair, it would be right here. So you wanna wrap from this direction. Okay, and then so we've stopped. So that's one row. Now we wanna come back and we're gonna do um, this row. And so we're slipping this stitch, we're, we're skipping the first one. And so now we're doing uh, the second one. And the way the row repeat is, um, you actually do two sets this way and then you actually you shift it so i know it sounds funny it's a four row repeat but you you actually um start off doing two rows and then we'll switch it and then we'll do it again because we want to set it up where it starts switching uh near immediately so after i do this row i will switch it Oh, darn it. Good, good morning, Nancy. I see you hopped on. I'm working with the um, Big Twist yarn uh, found at Joann's. If you want to know, this wrapper just came off. Big Twist Premium. And this is a medium weight. What does it say? Anyway, I was trying to find the color. Oh, it doesn't actually have a color name. Color 2012. <laughs> it's a chartreuse. It's a chartreuse green. I know I forget to say what I'm working with. Not a sponsored yarn or anything. I just, I like the color and picked it up. Of course I liked it. It's green. Y'all know I like green. Okay, so someone's asking about yarn and needles. Um, what I was using before was their Bernat blanket uh, yarn and it's using an, a US 11 or eight millimeter needle. And that is a, somebody help me out here. That's a super bulky. Um, and it's a recommended eight, min, eight millimeter needle. Um, this particular yarn is a recommended um, five and a half millimeter needle or US nine. Um, and okay, so I'm almost done. Okay, so I've done my setup. My setup is the first two initial rows and then um, I'm supposed to move over and so then I do a um, Let's see, yeah. I'm gonna go and do this first stitch and then I'm gonna come back here and then I'm gonna do these two and then I'm gonna do these two, okay? Oh yeah, matches my watch, you're right. <laughs> I kinda like it, don't I? Okay, so this was slipped before and now we're gonna do this stitch where it slipped and so I'm gonna go ahead and work this niche, uh, niche. <laughs> work, work this stitch first, just go over here and then, um, and then we're gonna make these two 
that we're working together here. And then we're gonna make these two work together. And then, yeah, I got these connected. And then these two are together. And then these two, and these two. And so what it does is it um, it creates like where this one was not connected before, now it will be. And so you'll work this, um, you'll work at this one until, uh, until you've done it. Um, so one, two, three, four. And when you get back over here, you've done four rows and then you'll switch it up again. Joanne, are you on here? I think you are. Does this make sense as to what I was talking about without actually switching your um, your your needles around or having to switch stitches? So what this does is it gives you a um, it gives you a way to do it without having to twist the stitches, just because it's it's a um, it's just anyway it's switching it around without you actually having to um, use cable needles and and move stitches back and forth to make it appear that it's switching back and forth and moving so it actually ends up joining it together I have to be very careful that I'm not so when you do this first row right after you have to be careful that you're not uh, I mean you have to be careful that you're following the pattern It's much easier work the honeycomb. Uh huh. Did I say waffle earlier? Man, y'all, I'm I'm tired. I, I was up late. <laughs> really, truly. I'm trying to get this other project done. Okay. And now I'm on to the last one. And then again, I'm going to go in between these stitches here because that's the way it would have been if it was another one to continue. Okay. So now, now I've got my, my pattern set and yeah. Okay. So I'm going to come here and follow around. And essentially, I'm just going to wrap this so you can see what it's supposed to look like. To see how it, it it wraps around like this, you're basically following around in a snaky pattern, but two by two by two by two by two. So that is it. So <laughs> um, let me flip the camera. Joanne says. When I actually copied the needle pattern exactly with knits, purls, and twisted stitches using a cable needle, this is much easier. I can't wait to try it out. Yeah, so you were you were working in one one line of um, like you were working from one side of the loom, and yeah, Lori. Um, so what is the loom gauge? Well. Okay, so to do this stitch, you just need an appropriate yarn for an appropriate loom. So if you um, if you pick a loom that's going to be, um, I mean, it depends on your loom, and then you just pick an appropriate yarn. You can do this stitch on any loom that's going to be like a long loom or, or a knitting board. This one's probably just a little too far apart for this yarn. Um, I mean, it's probably fine, but it'll be a little loose. Um, but you can do a, um, um, wow, I got a loop on here. I don't know how I have that. Anyway, oh, I got all tangled up. Um, but anyway, it depends on which loom you've got. So, um, on which, which yarn, which yarn you use. I'm sorry, I'm not really giving you a good answer because I don't know which loom you're going to use. 
Um, Martha says, I've been crocheting ever since I was seven years old, around 50 years. This looks a bit different. My grandmother taught me crocheting. If it's possible, can you show the final project that you've done in the dot, dot, dot? I can't see the rest of it because we're live. I'll have to be able to see it later. Actually, if I go on on the Good Kisses page, I might be able to see what you're saying. But um, anyway, yeah, of course, this is loom knitting. I'm sure you get that. This is not crocheting. Um, I'll have to go back and look at that later. I'm so sorry. It just it, it only allows me to see so much on these live um, things <laughs> on my phone. So um, anyway, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going back and forth. John says double knitting is one of those things that's very easy to do on loom and a bit more work on the needles. Yes. Mm-hmm. You can really do some things. What's really nice about double knitting is that you can really see the top of those stitches. Um, the only thing that would make a loom better is if it was clear. Like, really strong, where it wouldn't be brittle, but absolutely clear. Because the only thing I don't like about double knitting is I can't see what just came off the loom. Um, the thing I do a lot about needles is the fact that I can see it immediately. Um, loom, looms uh, make it to where it's like kind of going blind right there, which is fine, but um, I would just love that. <laughs> so um, that's just, that's something that I would like. Um, anyway, um, I'm getting some, hey, good morning. Shelly, Ashley, Stephanie, hey, okay, I think she wants to see a finished loom project. Oh, okay. Um, Lori says, yeah, I was wondering if you use a four thickness on a knitting board, a 28 inch knitting board. Um, probably if you double it, um, I think if you double it, you could, because the gauge on that one's a little wider. Um, yeah. Now, the... I'm assuming you're going to talk about the new 28 inch and not the one with the pins because the old old 28 has these these pins and you can use a four on those and that's a different type of look. Um, but yeah, I've got a whole bunch of tutorials on, on many of these things. I don't have as much on double knitting, but I do. I mean, I do have several. So um, if you'll check out my playlists on YouTube, if you go to YouTube.com. And uh, go to slash good knit kisses, or you can go to youtube.com and just look up good knit kisses. But um, if you go click on playlists on my main channel, you can see, and you have to like probably hit see more because I have a ton of different playlists. Also, one place to look up information is that when you go to good knit kisses, uh, go to loom. I can't even talk. If you go to youtube.com slash good knit kisses and not the search bar at the top but if you look slow, further down where there's little tabs and it says playlists and stuff there's a little bitty little out a little uh, magnifying glass and if you type in a, a short keyword it searches only my videos and this is for anybody's um loom knitting channel um if you're if you in particular like that particular person you want to see if they have what you need that's actually the best way to find something because you know you're only gonna get their videos and then you can do that on other people's channels i mean in fact if you have some favorite loom knitters channels i mean you can have up on different tabs and then click the little button and then and then type in what you want because I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, I just search randomly and you know what I mean? Well, it's great for finding new channels, but at the same time, uh, the, your favorite people probably have the video. You just need to know how to look it up. So hopefully that helps. Um, good morning, Teresa. Good morning, Candy Annie. <laughs> I've seen you hop on. So did this help you guys today? Was this kind of interesting? Um, you just continue to go around and, and wrap those up and then you just switch it over after every four rows once you've done that setup, that two row setup. And, um, and then you'll get this look here. You get this honeycomb. Honeycomb. Anybody ever watch that old cereal commercial? Honeycomb, honeycomb, honeycomb. I love my honeycomb. <laughs> so anyway, um... I hope that helps you guys today. Uh, I will be working on some loom stuff soon. Um, right now I'm just trying to finish up this blanket project and some other things and then I will be back to it. Got a few more videos on some 
um, some crochet stuff uh, coming up and uh, patterns to go with those on the blog and uh, <laughs> and all that. Hey, Callie, good morning. Oh, this is your first day off in a couple of weeks? <laughs> well, you're catching me. I'm, I'm actually signing off right now. This is... Um, this is this is a short tutorial thing just talking a little bit about how to do this um double rib stitch here so um oh my gosh geek moment stephanie you wonder if you can get clear thread for a 3d printer and print print a clear loom that would be amazing um doesn't um uh, doesn't rainbow loom have a clear loom i mean they have that clear loom but no one has one for a knitting loom that would be cool. The only thing is, is I would be afraid it would be too brittle. Um, I've thought many times about going into the loom knitting biz, but, <laughs> but I, I prefer doing what I do instead. So, um, I don't want to get on all that manufacturing. <laughs> I'd rather work with manufacturers. <laughs> I can see, but I would not want to do that. Anyway, um, thank you guys for coming um, to my, my sweetie, uh, Callie, who just came in. I'm sorry you're missing me, but if you want to catch up on some other tutorials and stuff or um, some of the other things from the last few weeks, um, of course, every Tuesday is limb knitting day, but other days of the week are different things. Um, Wednesday, everyone, is, tomorrow is um, needles and yarn day, bum, 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 and uh, I will probably show off this blanket a little bit more. I'm wanting to be finished. I really want to finish it today and then work on the blog. And so I can kind of geek out and tell you a little bit more about that tomorrow. So you guys have a great day and, uh, y'all send me out with some hearts and have a little bit of a down day. Ah, send me out some hearts, please, 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 please. <laughs> anyway, um, you guys have a wonderful day and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye everyone. Thank you for the hearts. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Bye.